Martin Luther King was murdered in Memphis on Thursday evening, April 4, 1968. And by early afternoon Friday, the residents of the west side of Chicago had taken to the streets. The looting began almost immediately, and the outnumbered police could do little but watch. A carnival-like atmosphere prevailed all afternoon and into the night. The looters claimed it was simply an expression of their righteous indignation over King's assassination. Even before the fires began, Chicago officials had requested help from the Illinois National Guard, but it would be hours before the first troops arrived. By four o'clock, the stores were looted, and two miles of Madison Street, from Western Avenue to Pulaski Road, were burning. At Fire Main, the situation was frantic, but still under control. The worst was yet to come. Firefighters, operating over 100 fire engines, did their best. But the rioters were starting fires faster than the fire department could put them out. As night came, the police concentrated their efforts on trying to protect the rest of the city from the rioters and left the fire department to fend for itself. By dark, the riots had spread south to West Roosevelt Road, leaving fires burning out of control from Kedsey to Pulaski. Firefighters had been dodging rocks and bottles all day, but as night wore on, the shooting began. 47 to Maine, 47. There's some police here that are shooting around here. It's 15th and Kedzie. Okay, 1-5 and Kedzie. 39 and 47 are both let out on this. Okay, uh, we'll give it the police, uh, 47. 216 to Maine, 216. Sixth Main, in my opinion, we need more police protection from on uh, Roosevelt from Kedzie West. Roosevelt and Kedzie West, okay. The National Guard began to arrive Friday evening and were issued ammunition. By Saturday morning, the National Guard was on the street in force. While supporting the police, the guard exchanged shots with snipers on the upper floors of the Cabrini Green housing project. The police finally rushed the building and made several arrests to end the shooting. At Mayor Daley's request, President Johnson ordered federal troops to Chicago. The battle-hardened veterans of Vietnam from Fort Carson and Fort Hood unloaded so quickly that the engines on the huge transports were never shut off. On April 7th, 
Palm Sunday. The regular army took up positions and the riot ended. The combination of 11,000 police, 7,000 National Guardsmen, and 5,000 federal troops finally brought peace to the burned out West Chicago ghetto. At least 10 lives had been lost, 500 people injured, and 3,000 arrests made during the three days of rioting. The total property losses exceeded $10 million. To prevent further death or injury, Heavy equipment was brought in to knock down the still smoldering wreckage. 